Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is part of a series on microeconomic reform. In previous videos, we studied labor market policies. In particular, we discussed centralization versus decentralization of the labor market. That discussion takes up a large part of the conversation about labor market policies. However, there are a few more aspects that we should look at. Today, I will look at dispute resolution, employment programs, as well as education and training as labor market policies. Let's start with looking at dispute resolution. Industrial disputes between employers and employees can be costly to the economy if there's not an efficient resolution process. Industrial disputes can come in the form of strikes and temporary closures of workplaces, leading to a loss of productivity and output. High frequency of disputes could also be indicative of an imbalance of bargaining power between employees and employers, which hinders allocative efficiency, as this means labor resources are not correctly priced. As you can see in this graph, days lost to industrial disputes in Australia has fallen over recent decades. This could be attributed to centralized efforts, such as legislated safety nets from the Fair Work Act, as well as guidelines and intervention from the Fair Work Commission to reduce and shorten disputes. On the other hand, the reduction in disputes could also be attributed to a decentralization movement, leading to workers not relying on these safety nets. This is characterized by declining union membership, an increasingly globalized, casualized, and contract-based workforce, as well as the rise of the gig economy. Next, let's look at employment programs. The main employment program that you should study is Job Active. This is a federally funded network of employment service agencies. They aim to provide employers with recruitment assistance and help job seekers find work. So how does this affect labor market outcomes? Obviously, it lowers unemployment, but what type? Frictional unemployment exists due to the imperfect transfer of information between unfulfilled jobs and those seeking work. So having an efficient network could reduce frictional unemployment and increase allocative efficiency. Having a network to inform job seekers of what skills are needed in the workforce could lead to updated skills and therefore lower structural unemployment. This could lead to a more occupationally mobile workforce, contributing to dynamic efficiency. Also, Job Active offers larger incentives for job agencies to help long-time job seekers. Therefore, long-term unemployment could also fall. Last but not least, let's look at education and training. Education and training is one of the best ways to increase efficiency in the labor market. Not only does it increase technical efficiency as labor becomes more skillful and therefore more productive, skilled workers are also more occupationally mobile. This means that their skill sets are more easily transferable, making them more responsive to structural change, which leads to allocative and dynamic efficiency. I hope that my explanations and examples have made it easier for you to understand a few more ways that the government can intervene in labor markets. By covering dispute resolution, employment programs, as well as education and training, we've wrapped up the topic on labor market policies. This doesn't mean we're finished with microeconomic policies though. Other examples include environmental policies and free trade versus protectionist policies. I'll be covering those in future videos. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss that. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video too. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.